Hello everyone, it's Farkid here. And in this video, I'm going to cover what's happening with Sons of the Forest. There's good news and bad news. The bad news is that it's been delayed until the 23rd of February, 2023. And I tweeted this on September the 1st. Hey everyone, due to the scope of our new game, Sons of the Forest, it has been hard to pinpoint an exact release date. And today we have to delay one last time. Giving us time to complete the polish we feel is needed, we will release on February 23rd, 2023, priced at $29.99 US. I'll put up a translation of currency to get a feel of how much that's roughly going to be, though in five months time this is probably going to change. Now the good news is, I believe it's true in that they want to complete the polish they feel is needed. Now the day after they announced this, N Knight sent me an email offering to fly me over to Vancouver from Australia for a week. They've paid for the flights and the week's accommodation. They want me to play test the game. It is going to be under a non-disclosure agreement, an NDA, which means I can't talk about it. I can talk about this going there, but once I'm in there and playing the game and testing it, I won't be able to report back on any of it. As you could imagine, it would be quite an expense to cover those flights. They're spending over $5,000 Australian to get me over there. They also said that a lot of people have been coming in and play testing it. So it sounds like the game is finished, though they want to iron out some creases. Now I think five months for polish and that is probably a standard, though what it says to me is that the game is different enough from the forest that it does need this play testing. So it's not going to be an expansion pack to the forest basically. There's there's going to be quite a lot of new things to it. To be honest, I was actually surprised they offered me this, mainly because I was quite provocative in my Q&As that I did, the two. Though I don't be provocative for the sake of being provocative, I try to be authentic. I try to be the person that I really am. Though also, I can't really help it, <laughs> to be honest. I'm hoping they get other content creators in as well, such as the Outer Middle Show and Broadman. I haven't checked if they've been offered this. I'm not sure if they've got a relationship with that night. I'm sure if they reached out, they might get something, but I'm not sure. Though in the email I got from Night, they did want me to focus on the building aspect of the playtesting. It is something that I feel is in my skill set, working with the mechanics to make them do what I want them to do, and also breaking the mechanics. I actually get a thrill off it. All the efforts they've tried to make structures not float, and there's two of them left in the game that you can still do. I will only be playtesting the game for one or two days, they said. I've never playtested a game, so I don't know what to expect or what they will want. I'm assuming I'll be in the office with them, so they'll be able to tell me what they expect me to do. I have a feeling that I'm probably being brought in to more test if it's fun and enjoyable rather than to try and break the game. I don't think it's going to stop me though, because who knows, I might find some big bugs in the game that need to be ironed out. I'm going there between the 9th and the 16th of October. I don't know if I need to announce that because I don't upload that much currently, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. On other news for the game, there have been two Q&As. One was done by Reddit. They didn't really get much information out of them, though the Sons of the Forest channel this is a very small channel. I don't know much about the guy who runs it, though he seems pretty dedicated. He did a Q&A and he actually got quite a few decent questions. I'll put a screenshot of one of the questions on the screen. I'm not going to play or show the video because I don't want to steal content from smaller channels. I will put a link in the description to the video so you can watch it for yourself. With the delay announcement, they did release a 12 second video with some footage on it. It was only released in 720p, which was quite low. I tried upscaling it using Topaz AI Enhancer and stuff like that. It didn't come out too great, but I think it came out a little bit better. Be a lot of things wrong with the video because there's a lot of fast motion in the snippet. But the first thing shows fingers walking towards the player and the player's got the chainsaw. As you can see, it is a battery operated chainsaw. The chainsaw is a lot smaller than the one from the forest, but I don't know how that's going to affect things. I've recently been using a battery powered chainsaw and yeah, they're not as good as a petrol one, but they still do the job. A lot safer, I think, because chainsaws can be quite dangerous. Though he's in a corridor somewhere, it's probably a Sahara facility. You can see reflections off the puddle on the ground. That might be ray tracing. Then again, I don't really know what ray tracing is. But yeah, it looks like a Sahara facility. On the chainsaw, you can see a light and LED indicating what's most likely the battery level. So that would be a good way to tell how much charge you have left on your chainsaw. And the next one, it shows the player getting a headshot with a bow on a cannibal and there's a few of them running around and also in the back you can see them climbing a tree so that mechanic's coming back. Hopefully it'll be expanded upon because in the forest they just climb it and then kind of just jump down. They don't really do much with it. Could be a lot of potential ambush mechanics in the game. I get a real Skyrim vibe from this 
segment here. It does look like Skyrim. And also there's a cannibal running and doing a jump attack at the player. What's funny is that the crafted bow that he's using, it's got that blue piece of fabric on it, which they had in the forest as well. So they're bringing that back. I wonder what it means, if it has any symbolic meaning to it. Probably doesn't, it's just something I noticed. Also in the second part, there's a cannibal on the ground and it looks like he's actually in the snow. So the bodies will actually sink into the snow, which is kind of cool. I actually don't know how they would have done that. Interesting. In the next segment, they show logs going down a river and or waterfall. I don't know what's classed as a waterfall, but the rushing water effects look pretty good. This might be a legitimate way to move logs around the map. Though hopefully they sort out the log counter for how many logs you can have on the ground because you don't want to send down say 200 logs and then find out 150 of them despawned like it would in the forest because the forest doesn't tell you that. I understand that they need the limitations but the game doesn't tell you how many can be on the ground. I have a feeling they've figured out a way to make it so you can have unlimited. They just changed to static objects instead of dynamic ones, etc. Next one's a fight scene in the cave and it looks like there's the twins fighting another player. So that's a multiplayer snippet, that one. And that player's wearing a scuba suit. There's no player name above the player. I'm guessing it will be an option. Also, the player themselves are holding machete and a flashlight. And you can see that LED marker to show how much battery it's got. I think that's actually a really cool feature. That way you don't have to have a HUD showing how much numbers something's got. It's more authentic to have it just on the screen showing what it is. A lot of fire on the ground too. And then the next segment shows a chief cannibal sitting on a chair, sliding a huge club around. He's got a red band on his arm. There's no sound in this trailer, by the way. There's a coffin or a box next to him and it's got a skeleton in it just chilling it's giving me some fallout vibes that one there's also mushrooms next to them they're the poisonous ones from the forest so they're making a return just strange segment this one because there's this chair in the middle of what appears to be nowhere he's the chief one that was in the other trailers the one with the golden mask so i have a feeling this guy's gonna play a big role guess we'll see but yeah that's all i've got for you for this one i was gonna do another q a I've got 51 questions ready, but I have a feeling that I will need to do it before I go because it will be hard to ask questions about a game that I've played when I've signed an NDA. I think in the questions though, I've got an alternative motive behind them as in to indicate things I actually want in the game rather than them just being standard questions. I'm not sure. I need to think about it, but I need to think about it fast. Time's running out. It's only like two weeks to go. So yeah. Something I've noticed that a lot of people will seem to be quite upset about the game not coming out on console. It's hard for me to relate because I don't have one and it's not an issue for me. For those people who are asking, because N9 hasn't said much about it, my thoughts will be that the game will come out on PC, it will receive its polish for a few months, they will hire a company that will convert it from PC to Xbox and PlayStation. That's what I think will happen. I think that the PlayStation version of The Forest was actually made by them. I think it is a bit of a skill set to convert a PC game to a console game, but now they're probably just going to get someone else to do it so they can just focus on the PC version. That's what I think will happen. So my guess is that you'll probably see at PlayStation or Xbox version or both about six months after. That's my guess, but that's very optimistic, I think. I don't know how extensive of a process that is to do. Anyway, that's all I've got for you. And if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.